My name is Will, and I, like Mulder from the X-Files, want to believe. So I've embarked on a journey of discovery. I've talked to people deeply entrenched in the spiritual and metaphysical worlds. I've thrown myself into weird and wonderful experiences. I've even joined a coven of witches, all in the interest of finding something, anything, that will prove that there's something beyond this physical, three-dimensional world we all live in. This is The Skeptic Metaphysician. Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of The Skeptic Metaphysician. I had to make it a little different. I thought thought you forgot. No, the same thing every time. It's boring. I had to change it up a little bit here and there. Gotcha. Karen, so excited that you're back with us again today. Well, I always enjoy doing this. But this one's going to be even more fun because we are talking to someone that is remarkable. I've listened to him in other, other shows before, and every time it's left me wanting more. And I can't wait to hear your reaction to oh, everything. Boy. Now, um, what do you know about spirit mediums? Gosh, I mean, I've, I've been to mediums quite a bit. I know I definitely want to know more. <laughs> well, then you were, you're in luck because this gentleman is <laughs> truly a remarkable spirit medium. He's been surrounded by spirit his entire life, but the ability to communicate with spirit actually bloomed when he turned 50. Oh, wow. Yep. Yep. Now, as an intuitive reader, he communicates with spirit and angels, notably the archangels. So, yeah, uh, we're talking Michael, Gabriel, and Ooh, the important ones, the, including, but including Lucifer, which I'm really, we'll talk about that. <laughs> Now, he's able to confirm spirit crossings, provide spiritual consult and guidance for those seeking help with life's problems. And he's also able to retrieve answers for people who feel they've lost their way spiritually. I am super excited to welcome to the show, Daniel Jackson. Daniel, thanks for coming on. Hello. How are you? How are you, Will? How are you, Karen? appreciate you being uh, having me here. Yeah, we appreciate you coming. We're excited to, to talk to you about this stuff because it is super intriguing and uh, controversial all at the same time. So. Yeah, it is, it is controversial because the reason it's controversial is because we have been taught the incorrect way from a long time ago, and then they want you to think it is controversial because they don't want you to know the truth about it. That's why. That's what makes it all the more interesting, exciting, because I have listened to you on other shows, and you have some viewpoints that are really eye-opening and, and super <laughs> interesting. So I can't wait to talk to you about them. So let's get that, that massive elephant in the room out of the way first. Why would you consider yourself to be a spirit medium? Because I connect with my spirit guides, which are archangels. I saw you referring to the important ones, but they're (laughs) all important because uh, how many archangels do I have with me? All of them. And the reason why I have them with me is because my main gift is I cross spirit over into the light. But the uh, now this is going to freak you out. So the actual light that I'm crossing them into is me meaning the light that shines into heaven to show spirit where to go and what to do has to be within a physical body in order to do that for two reasons. One, to shine all the time, and two, to physically cross them over, meaning talking to them, answering questions for them, and then showing them where to go and what to do. And it just happens to be inside of me. It was actually in my grandfather before it was in me. My grandfather wanted to know when I was going to be born, and he was calling my mom and dad every day, and, you know, I have two brothers and a sister. He didn't really give a shit about them being born. But uh, with me being born, he wanted to know why. Because he knew. Because he had this ability as well. And when I was getting ready to be born, what he didn't know was this next part, which is uh, my dad called him up and said, hey, it's time to come to the hospital. He's getting ready to be born. And, and he said, okay. He got ready to come to the hospital. He had a heart attack and died. His soul left his body and came into mine, and I was born. Wow. Wow. And through the... Uh, so through the communication of my spirit, which are archangels, they are not men with swords. They don't have ba- they don't have shields. They don't have swords. They're not fighting a battle in heaven, because we would think, oh well, they're fighting a battle in heaven. That's what demons and devils and all that stuff. But as we as people think, you know, demons and devils are in hell. Why would they be in heaven? So they're not fighting a, a battle in heaven, nor are there actually demons and devils, because that's a bunch of crap as well. Yeah. So uh, by talking to them, they told me that I am this light. And it just happened. It's just the soul that keeps turn, coming back over and over and over again. So in other words, what that means is because each, each and every person here comes back over and over and over again, you just come back as a different version of you every time. 
So obviously my grandfather was a different version of me. So it's almost like, like an incarnate version of the Grim Reaper where you actually uh, help people cross over. Uh, yeah, but there's no such thing as a Grim Reaper either. A lot of this stuff. Kind of, oh yeah. It's, it's all, there's, there's all these uh, rumors and all this stuff made up by TV and movies and I'll just do one thing just to scare you more or less. But yeah, I, I actually, I tell them where to go and what to do. But the ones that I'm talking to are the ones who have not crossed over into the light yet. These are the ones who have remained earthbound spirit. As many spirit that cross over into the light, there's that many that don't. And there's gazillions of them. I see them all the time. So are you exclusive to this or are there a lot of people like you out there that, that helped you with the crossing over? Because if it's just you, man, that's a lot of work. Well, <laughs> and <laughs> other people can, yeah, other people can cross them over into the light, but the, the light that they're crossing them over into is me. Like I said, when I say when someone comes back, you come back over and over and over again because we don't learn our lessons or fulfill our purpose. My soul just keeps coming back for the same reason over and over and over again. So my my soul, as what they've told me, has been here since the beginning. So if you are your grandfather's soul, knowing yeah. and talking with family about who he was and what his life experiences were, can you maybe in that way correct some of the things that he didn't learn? Or is that any oh, part of your past now? No correction. There's no correction needed because all I'm here to do is do what they want me to do, which is not answer that answer phone. Answer the phone. <laughs> it's, it is to just cross spirit over into the light. That's okay. all the concern is for me. It's for, for me to do that. And I mean, I have a purpose. Everyone has the same purpose in this world. And your actual purpose is not your job. It's, it's not, that's a choice you made to go out and be a doctor or a lawyer. But your mm -hmm. purpose is, is fulfilling that while doing that. And your purpose is you're here to help people just for the sake of helping, just because you can, just because you could. Someone will come up to you and ask you for help. It's up to you to use your free will to decide whether or not you're going to do that. And if you're one of those people who chooses not to do that because you hate the world and you hate people, you'll just end up on the alternative path and you'll come back again. It's not punishment. You're just learning. That's all. But if you continue to help people throughout your lives, you may not have to be here as many times as others do. But everybody does come back. I haven't. I've, I haven't done a reading yet that I've met anyone who's been here less than, well, less than eight times or nine times. But most most people. I was only one person. I've met uh, most people I do readings for. They've been here twenty six between twenty six and twenty nine times. Wow. Well, okay. Well, like, I keep coming back to the your statement that that. Everyone being crossed over into the light in the light is you. I mean, I mean, are you, you're encompassing, everyone's going into you and your body is part of, or your soul is, is, is really where we go after we die. I'm, I'm trying to heart, I have a hard time. Yeah. My soul is the guiding light for that. So my, my soul is actually lit the whole time. It, it's bright to the, to the point that this is going to sound strange to you. But when, when uh, my wife comes into the bedroom at night, she doesn't need a nightlight. I physically glow. Really? And or, yeah, and or when, when souls are passing through me, sometimes people actually see the, the flash of light. My, I was with my sister one time talking in a really low lit room, and she knows about my ability because she has it a little bit, but not so much because it's just too negative, but it's her. But we were talking in a room, and all of a sudden a big flash of light went off in the room, like lightning went off inside the room. And she was like, oh, my God. And I was like, what? And she's like, that flash of light. What was that? I was like, oh, that's just somebody jumping in. She says, jumping in. Jump, jump. Oh, you mean crossing over? I said, yeah. She said, how do you get used to that? I said, you know, when we were kids and mom stuck green beans in front of our face and then 30 years later, we like to eat green beans. <laughs> you get used to it. Yeah. So, yeah, I said, it was just somebody crossing over. And every 10 minutes, she kept telling me, I saw that. I saw that. I said, yeah, Joan, I saw it too. I see it every day. I see it all day long. But it just... It's who I am. I get used to it. That's all. How do you know that that the light is you? Like, I know you talk to the archangels and things like that. So, did they? I mean, it, it, that's a that's a really lofty statement to make that you are the yeah, light sure. to go to, right? Sure. Uh, so, you, yeah, uh, you have absolutely no hesitation whatsoever. So, you are very convinced of this. So, how? What makes you so convinced? Well, uh, when I found out who I was five years ago, I've always seen spirit my entire life. I just didn't know why. And I've always seen a lot of them, and I didn't know why. And I had a paranormal group come to my house, and they got so much information, they'd actually quit the group and didn't want to come back because they were all scared to come back to my house. They, they had this box that they used called an ovulus, and they had me sit in my room and pretend I was sleeping, and they brought it in, and they turned it on, and it started spitting out words. It said, Helen, Michael, Paul, 
Wendy uh, said the word uh, unique, special, energy, light. One time it said the word road. And when it did that, a car went vroom, right past my house. And I was like, this is pretty cool. But they asked it one question that freaked me out. And this is part of it as well. They said, they said to it, are you here to harm Daniel? And in that computer voice that spit out, it said, no, we are not here to harm Daniel. We love Daniel. We love his light. Daniel is the light. And I was like, what the heck does That's that mean? You know? Cares, cares. So, I know. I totally got goosebumps. I ended up getting, uh, going to five different mediums and every one that I went to, each one of them told me the same story about me and none of them knew each other. One of them in particular told me that when I walked, I went to see a show of hers. I didn't, I didn't tell her I was coming, but she said when I walked in the room, she could pick me out from everybody else. She said, when you, when you, and I see the same too. When you, when you see someone, when spirits see someone, they see your body frame, but they only, but they see your light inside of you. And that's your soul. That's what the power behind your body. It's like a radio and a battery. If you take that battery out of the radio, it doesn't work. You put it back and it works. And that's the yeah. same way with us. Because if you don't have a soul, your, your body will not be alive. So it's what makes up who you are. That's who, just who you are. So she said, when I walked in the room, I looked like a light bulb. She didn't, she, she closed her eyes. She could feel the energy, but when I walked in, she closed her eyes and all she could see was light. So she explained it to me. She said, that's what spirits see with you as well. And I said, what do you mean? She said, they don't see you or it's your body. They see just light. You look like a light bulb and I'm like a beacon of light. And that's why you're seeing so many because they're coming to you. You have an ability to see them and communicate with them. But you see so many because they're coming to you. And for me, if I'm in a dark room, I mean, it would probably freak everybody else out, but it doesn't bother me anymore. It's like being in a room with a thousand people, except nobody leaves and everybody just keeps coming in. And that's how wow. I see during the day. I see, more, I see more spirit in one day than any paranormal group will ever see, wow. ever. I assume then that you are seeing them right now. So, oh, absolutely. I see them. I mean, who do you want me to look at? <laughs> I don't know. Anyone interesting? Well, do you want me to stare at the the woman and she's got brown hair? She's got green eyes. It's her hair is kind of long and wavy, and she's sitting on your bed. That's my grandma. Is it? That's Mima. That's a little freaky. Okay. Um, <laughs> that is your grandmother. Is it? And yep. the reason why she's actually here with you is because she's actually here to be a spirit guide for you. You didn't know that, did you? My grandmother? Yes. No, I, I did not know that. I, that and it, of all the people I spoke to, lots of people, never once has anyone brought up my grandmother as a spirit guide for me or, or, or that she was so sometimes they, Sometimes they tell me their names, but I can just see them. Wow. Okay. So. So with that light. So, yeah. So they, so they have those spirit come in and they see me and they see me as the super bright white light. And that's why I see so many because they're coming to me. So no matter where I go, no matter what I do, as I tell anybody, if you want your house to be haunted, invite me in. It will be in 10 minutes because they follow me everywhere I go. So uh, some of the good ones and, and some of the are the negative ones are not demons and devils. They're just people who were just crappy people who did not cross their into the light. And they remained here as an earthbound spirit. And they have to, they like to annoy the crap out of people, but they need negative energy in order to, to move around in their lives because they feed off of that. So they find negative people here, but uh, I see them as well. But yeah, I, I look into, when I'm in meditation, I look into the, uh, into the earthbound realm and I just, they see me just a white light and they know exactly what I am. And I, and then I start talking to them. That's what freaks them out. Cause I say, hi, my name's Daniel. And they look at me and they all go turn around. I'm like, what? I said, yes, there's a voice coming from this light. My name's Daniel. I am, I am the light into heaven. I'm here to show you where to go. And as soon as I start saying that, they start lining up and then I tell them where to go and what to do. Some of them ask questions and I always tell them, tell the person behind you to tell the person behind them to get over here and let's go and line them up. And they just, they just come on through and flashes of light go off around me all the time. So are you the only person like this or are there other people? I mean, there's so many souls. I think there are more There's people. only one light that shines in there. It just, it's me. Wow. Yeah. That's quite the responsibility. It is. It doesn't it get tiring. I mean, well, well, it is. Yeah, it does get tiring sometimes. But when this all came about, I had a choice and the choice was to either accept this or push it away. If I had pushed it away, I probably would have had to come back again. <laughs> so I, I chose to accept it. Well. But yeah, she said, the, she said, yeah, they're just coming around you because they think, think you're the light in heaven. I said, what's that mean? She says, you're the light in heaven. That's what it means. She says, uh, it, it is what it is. And you have to d decide whether or not you're going to move forward with this or not. Wow. So I, did. What, so I just moved forward with it. When you say that to people, 
I mean, the kind of reaction is probably pretty varied, right? No, no different direction. If somebody just walked up to you and told you you're they're a brain surgeon, everybody I, is who they are. Okay, hang on, because I've got so many questions going through my head that I don't know what to head first. But let me back up a little bit. When you're seeing people, you're seeing spirits. Are they in corporeal sure. form? I mean, just like when you, you, you talked about my grandmother just now sitting on the bed. You saw her. No, I don't see them. I don't, I see them differently. Like if you look at the wall and the, uh, behind you, what color is the wall? It's like yellow. Beige. Beige yellow. Okay. When I see it, it's, it's the same color, but it's also blue in it as well. So my, my regular vision has like a blue mist in everything that I look at. No matter what I'm looking at, if I'm looking at my desk here or looking at anything, I could be looking at a Twinkie and look at it and it's, it's yellow and bluish because, what, because all I, I see energy all the time. It never goes away. Three and a half years ago is when that came in and it changed everything. So when I look at, when I go outside at nighttime and I look up in the sky, I don't see the stars anymore. They're gone. All I see is the, uh, the moon and a blue black sky and I see energies. I see people, dogs, cats, horses, cow, fish, other beings from other worlds, everything in spirit walking around. You just opened up a whole other door. You said dogs, cats, fish. So, so animals actually have spirit as well? Yes, absolutely. Yes. And when they speak to me, uh, it comes through as English. Wow. And do animals reincarnate as animals or is it just people can be animals, can be people, yeah. can be? Yeah, I love that one where people go, uh, I think next time I'm going to come back as a shark. No, it doesn't happen. <laughs> I don't come back as a... You, but you come back into the world uh, many different times and many different what we would call genders as well. So sometimes you may come back as a man, sometimes you may come back as a woman. But the, the, the point of coming back is you're here to learn lessons and fulfill that physical purpose. That's all. So then are you worried at all? Because the way that you came into this world, your grandfather, your father told the grandfather he's about to be born and on the way to the hospital, he had a heart attack and died. Are you afraid of your son telling you Hey, your grandson is now Pete Moore. <laughs> no, I don't have any kids. I wasn't I wasn't meant to have any kids. This is the last time that this soul will actually be here. So when I leave, like yours, like the soul that's inside of you now doesn't look like you. It looks like you the last time you were here. That's all. Just that's why I tell people don't mess with the 23 me and, and the ancestry.com because the person you're looking up from a hundred years ago that looks similarly like you was you a hundred years ago. That's all. We look the same. Back then, as we yes, well, no. You ever see the guy in the ancestry.com commercial? He goes, "Well, I thought I was half, I was, I was Italian, but I'm half European." See the guy that looks just like me from hundred years ago? Yeah, it was him. So then, one of the apparently one of the lives that I had in the past was a, was an eight year old girl in somewhere in Europe that was an apprentice to a witch. Absolutely. But, uh, so when the, I'm actually being touched right now, I get touched by the archangels. And, and so when you're telling me that they're touching me, and the first thing I ask them is if you're actually telling me the truth or not, and you, you are actually telling the truth. To the best of my knowledge, absolutely. I don't know for, for sure, but I was regressed spontaneously, and, I, and this is one of the lives that apparently I've had, had. But I can't see me looking absolutely. now like I did then. Right. I was, I don't look like an eight year old girl now. Oh, well, uh, cause you're not eight years old. That's why <laughs> no, you grow, you grow up, you're, you're just in a different body, but I mean, you ever notice how some boys and girls, like some brothers and sisters are looking alike. They don't look exactly alike, but they look similarly alike. It's the same thing. That's all. And now what about soulmates? You were, you, were, you were here to learn lessons within that body. That's why you came back as an eight year old. You're an, a girl. You didn't, you didn't, um, let me ask you something real quick. Yeah. You didn't grow up to be very old. Yeah, you died at twenty-seven. Well, it's because you were being you were being bred to be a witch. That's why. So my question is about soulmates, and when when Will was regressed, I guess they told you that we had been together before. You have been together before has nothing to do with soulmates whatsoever. Soulmate is not what they wanted to tell you it is. Soulmate is not somebody you're necessarily going to fall in love with. Soulmate is a soul that you worked very well with when you were back home, because this is not home. In that light, that's home. And you, you were friends there. You worked very well together. And then you happen to both be here at the same time and you meet up. A soulmate could be your mom, could be your dad, could be your brother, could be your sister, could be your best friend, could be your dog, could be your cat. It could be any of them. You guys were just, you guys were just married 13 times. We've been married 13 times. No, that's our yes. lucky number. That is that, 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 lucky number. That was one of the things that we both like, oh, that's my lucky number too. 
<laughs> interesting. That's super interesting. That's because, Will, you've been here 28 times. How long have I, how many times have I been here? 27. Ah, I'm older than you. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, so what that means, uh, well, if you come back, if you die the age before the age of 30 years old, then you would come back eight years later. And, and there was a case when you've done that a few times. And there's, and there's other times when you, when you pass the age of 30 years old, say if you died at 80 years old, then you wouldn't come back for another 80 years. And the reason why for, for, these, for these differences is because just so you won't be uh, noticed. They don't want right. to pick that up the fact that you're the same person. So then, then you, you must know then what happens to us after we pass. You want to know? I do. I Me do too. very much. I want to know very badly. <laughs> so the way that it works for everybody, it works the same for you because there's there's two rules in this world. As long as you comprehend these rules and you follow these rules, you're going to appreciate your life a little bit better. And uh, rule number one is people die every day. And rule number two is you can't change rule number one. I don't care what vaccine <laughs> you take. It's like Everyone right dies. It just is. No one lives to be 150 years old. And you know what? I don't want to be 150 really? because at that point it's going to hurt. It's going to hurt the pee. So I don't want to do that. <laughs> is it bad that it does already? <laughs> uh, uh, right, well, that's called the clout, Will. So, yeah. <laughs> that's a whole other show. <laughs> yeah, right? yeah, no kidding. That's yeah, a doctor show right there. But, yeah. So uh, the way that it happens for everybody is you basically fall asleep. You, you're out and your light goes out. What happens? You're going to stand up out of your body. You're going to look down. You're going to see your body and go, mm, I guess I don't need that anymore. You're going to take a step to the left. You're going to look to the right-hand side, and you're, you're going to see a light come on. It's not me. Everyone gets a personal light, and it's your choice to either go into that light or not. You either go in and cross over and you go back home, or you remain here with the other gazillions of miserable people who haven't crossed over because there's gazillions of them. Now, there are others, also other ones there who are just lost or who were just scared or just confused, and that's why they didn't cross over. Or somebody told them they're going to be judged or go into hell or something, or they were just a bad person or something like that. But it's always a choice. If you go in, it's your choice. If you don't go in, it's your choice. But the, another reason why they don't go in is because they, they want to hold on to their pain, anger, sorrow, grief, guilt, and anguish, and all that stuff. All those things that you learned how to have here. You didn't come into that world with this, and uh, you don't leave with it if you choose not to. But if you choose to hold on to it, you will remain here as an earthbound spirit. And there's, it's not hell. There's nothing to do there. There's no, uh, I see it. There's no uh, buildings. There's no tree. There's land there. And they're just people all walking around, interacting with each other, just talking to each other. I'll tell you what they do do there. Uh, I see them all the time. They're looking at me and they turn around and they see me, but I don't say anything all the time unless, you know, they come a little closer. But I see them making out all the time. It's like one big giant spirit orgy and I'm not invited. So uh, I just watch it all the time, and then uh, they're just making out in front of me. And when they start doing that, it's it's really hard to get their attention away from that. But I I see dogs and cats, and I'll just start crossing them over and get them over, and cows and horses and everything. I mean, I walked in my kitchen one time with my wife and I after coming back from dinner. And as soon as I walked in, I saw a spirit of a, a horse, a, a horse inside my kitchen. I was like, holy crap. I mean, I see them in full size. So, uh, so yeah, you'll stand up out of your body. You'll, you don't need that anymore if you cross over into the light. You go through, what happens at that point is because you've let go of all your pain, anger, sorrow, grief, and guilt, anguish, and all that stuff you've left it behind. You are now a beautiful, white light, loving being. That's what you are all about. You're all about love. You're all about forgiveness. You're all about happiness, all that stuff. All these other things that are on earth, you don't give a crap about. You don't care about money. You don't care about cars, none of that stuff, because you know why? It's not important. They don't have it there. If it's so important and they don't have it there, why do we mess with it here? Because it's not important. It's not important to have six cars and seven houses and ten boats. It's just, we can't. But the world wants to want you to believe that's important. But it's not. So you get to this place. It's not heaven. No one gets to heaven right away. You go to a holding place, and the reason you're going to that holding place is for a couple reasons. Two, because 130,000 people die every day, and you have to wait your turn. And two, they're going to go over your life with you. They're going to say, Hey, Will, you know what? You made this decision. And you think it affected this person and this person, but it did. It affected this person, this person, this person, this person. And you go, oh, man, because you as a soul likes to do good things. Like, oh, man, that's a bummer. But there's two options that are going to come up. And one option is if you fulfilled your purpose, they would just ask you if you want to go back. But if you haven't fulfilled your purpose, 
you just go back and they tell you you have to go back but you as a soul who likes to do good things are like oh cool i get to go back to earth and do all these cool things and they will teach they will try to teach you things to help you uh along your way but what happens is you come back into the world and all of a sudden when you're in a baby body and you have two people going i'm your mom and dad and you're going i don't know who the hell you are but okay <laughs> are they really your mom and dad not really they're not they're just they just helped you be born here that's what they did because everyone when you go back to heaven, because you've been there, you know, 27 other times, you've been there 27 other times, meaning you've had 27 other moms and dads, 27 other brothers and sisters, 27 other names, and not including your actual soul name, which is a name that you cannot pronounce because your your name is more of a, uh, a sound, it's more of a vibration. When you get back there, when you go back home, you don't just know the two or 300 people that you've met here in your entire life. You know everybody, yeah. every single soul that is back in heaven. You know them all. Do you know why? Because you're related to them all, meaning you're related to every single person that's on the face of this earth. But we just don't realize that because if you, if you understood those kinds of things, if you understood what was heaven like, and if you remember anything from, from heaven, you would not be able to function here as a human being, learning your lessons and fulfilling your purpose. That's why you don't remember heaven. You remember some things from being here on earth. You're going to know them. They're called deja vus. They're not deja vus. They're just memories. You've had them before. You've, you may not have been in that house before, but you were in that space before. And that's why it feels familiar to you. It's a memory. But a lot of these things, they don't want to tell you the world society, you know, they don't want you to know this because if you knew all this stuff about you, you wouldn't need to rely on them. You can have power over yourself but we have relinquished the power to them. So I have two questions I'm going to ask That's you back. Good. First, Go right ahead. Um, those, who, those who don't cross over, you said that people have a choice when you, when you, you pass, um, you have a choice to cross over to the light and you have a choice not to. Those who don't cross over, are they stuck they there ever. forever? And secondly, no, they can leave anytime they, can, they can leave anytime they want to, they, to they, the light? They, they can cross anytime they want to. A lot of them don't know that they can cross and that's my job to, to tell them that they can cross and help them over to cross. So yeah, they, they don't realize because again, they made a choice. I had two spirit come into my bedroom one time who were standing right above me and I was watching them and uh, I didn't say anything cause they're standing there just staring at me. And one guy says, Hey man, I think I'm going to go in. And the other guy said, I can't go. And he goes, why not? He goes, cause I murdered two people. And he goes, Oh, well, well, we'll see you later. And boom, he just jumped in big flash goes off. And I said to the one, hey, buddy. And he looked at me like, holy crap. That, I said, yeah, the light got a voice. I, I'm a human being. I, I, you know, I was what you used to be, but you're not anymore. I said, you can cross over anytime you want to. And he said, I, but I killed two people. I said, that doesn't matter. You did what you were supposed to do. You just didn't understand it at the time. But you can cross over anytime that you want to. You don't have to stay there. You don't have to ask for forgiveness from God. Nothing. All you have to do is walk in. You may have to come back again. And he's like, I don't know. I have to think about that. I said, well, it's up to you, but I'm just letting you know you can come in. And he said, thank you. And he and just turned around and walked away. I mean, they don't really walk. They just kind of mm, went away. <laughs> but yeah, that's a lot of the reasons why they just, you know, they don't get it. You keep talking about that they they send you back or they tell you this or this. Who are they? They are, are the ones who do the work for God. And that would be archangels. No one goes to heaven and sees God. No one. You just don't. He's, he has, look up in the sky. He does all that. He's got that to do. We are not the only beings in this ever, anywhere. He has that to take care of. You will see archange what we call archangels. You will see Jesus, see him all the time. He's actually one of my spirit guides, touches me right here in the middle of my forehead. So, uh, yeah, I, and I know the names of all the, archangels that actually touch me on my on my face i get one answer for no so when i was asking if you are telling me the truth and not if i got uh you are not telling me the truth it feels like a tears running down the left side of my eye or i get the other ones where i get these things that feel like blood dripping across my face in different sections of my face and and i think i'm i think i'm up to like 16 now so yeah something like that Uriel, ezekiel daniel jacob who else manos helen gabriel raphael Got a new one came in like two weeks. A name named Ansel comes in right here, like that. Wow. Yep. 
They come in. They, they've been coming in. When at the very beginning, it started out. I had two. Now I'm up to sixteen. Oh, I have one other that touches me on my my eyelid, right on my um, right on my eyelashes. What I've only felt that five times, and I've only seen him twice, and that's God. Wow, that's that's. Of course, you want to know what he looks like. <laughs> he looks like yeah, yeah. The first the first time I saw him, he looked like uh, what we would think of of the Greek god Zeus. He had that big muscular look. Uh, long flowing gray hair. He had cro crow's feet, was kind of a very handsome man. Uh, he came in because I was very sick at one time and he wanted to assure me that I was going to be okay. The second time I, I uh, what do you say to God? Ask him for lottery numbers? No, you don't talk about that bullshit. So uh, the second time I saw him, he came in very uh, genderless. I just saw eyes and a nose, and, but he came up right here in front of my face like that. And other spirit cannot get that close to me. Uh, especially the negative ones. That's why I have archangels with me because they protect me from all the negative energies. I could walk into absolutely any, what you would call horrific haunted house. And you know how they go around scratch people and stuff? They can't touch me. Nothing can touch me because I have to be protected in order to cross spirit over into the light. So the, uh, so, uh, so he got real, real close to my face and because I, he got that close to my face, I know exactly who he was. You, but you could feel it. I felt it. I knew who he was. Now you, you, so you're saying that, that God is separate from us. So a, lot of, a lot of the New Age people, you know, they always talk about the fact that we are God, we're parts of God. And you yeah, we are part. Yeah, we are part of him. You, you, you were created from God, from a part of him, which makes your soul a divine soul. Every soul is divine, not just Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ died for being a free thinker. That's what he died for. He was here to tell people that we could live together and, and share everything in this world together and, and, and then take care of each other in this world. But the people who did not, not want that happening were the people who were in control, the kings and the queens. But that was religion who was in control. Religion scooped him up and put him on that cross. He wasn't the first one to be on it. He wasn't the last one to be on it. And they tortured him and they murdered him in front of everybody to let them know that if you follow him and do what he's doing, we're going to do this to you too. That's why they want you to wear a cross around your neck, not to remind you of what Jesus did for you because he really didn't do anything for you. He was just here to tell us what we could do. But they want you to wear that cross around your neck to remind you of the punishment that they will bring you if you do what he did. That's why. Wow. That is quite a statement. Yeah, well, it's the truth. That's why the, the religion does want you to know that because religion is made up. Religion has nothing to do with Jesus and God. They just indoctrinated him and those two into it to, to bring you fear. Do you fear your own father? Because I don't. Why should you? He's your father. You don't fear him. How, how can you fear a God, but also have him have mercy as well? What the, does it, what, what, what end of that? Which end am I supposed to go to? Neither end. He's your father. He takes care of you. God bless you. God didn't bless you. Well, sort of once he put you here, he wants us to figure out the rest. Well, and I think it's the big difference between the Old Testament and the New Testament. Mm -hmm. The Old Testament is the spiteful Old God. Testament, New Testament. God. Lie, 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 deceit, lie, deceit, power, control, greed, power, control, greed. I want to tell you how to live your life the way I want you to live it. And I want you to give me 10%. How the hell did they know about 10% back then? Because it was the kings and queens are the ones who wrote the Bible. God didn't write it. The ones who were in control wrote the Bible. Prophets, you know what prophets were? They were musicians and poets because they could do something that other people couldn't. They were named prophets. Do you know all that? Want me to, want me to answer how I know all that? Sure. sure. Because angels told me because I've never read Bible in my entire life. I don't read books. It's garbage. I've, I've read one book in my entire life. It was Howard Stern's Private Parts. That's it. After that, I had enough. I don't need to read, I don't need to read books. I listen to them. Wow. So, I mean, where, where do you go from there? <laughs> Third question. Uh, what wait, was your wait, second wait. question? Uh, well, the second question was, who, who are they? The third, third question was, are we separate from God? Then my last question before I... Now you've got four. Before, and I never got my one in. <laughs> <laughs> we are a part of God's children. That's all. We're just, we're all children of God. Uh, Jesus Christ is basically your brother. That's what he is. We're all connected. We're all brothers and sisters. We're just here learning lessons. But uh, they are archangels. They are the ones that do everything. And then you, but there's a, a hierarchy as well as that. You have God, you have archangels, you have what's called, what the archangels call lesser angels, just because they have lesser responsibility. Then after them, you have what's called spirit guides, then you have general spirit, then you have us, and then you have low negative energy spirit. And those are the ones who have not crossed over, who are just, you know, crappy. But you have spirit guides.
like your grandmother is a spirit guide here to help you throughout your life and make help you make decisions. It's just up to you whether or not you're actually going to follow what she tells you to do. That's Archangels talk. To me. So when I'm driving down the road on my motorcycle and I say, mm, I think I'm, I want to take this right hand turn, I get a no. So you know what I don't do? I don't take that right hand turn. <laughs> I say, yeah. I say, do you want me to go down to the next road and make a, 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 a the next right hand turn? And I get yes. And I say, okay. And that's the way I go. Wow. That's the divine I've direction. Been told, yeah, absolutely. Right. We all have divine direction because every decision you make in your entire life is being made by your spirit guides and your soul in order because it's your soul that runs your body and they connect with your soul, which connects with your body. We get your body to turn around and do things. But sometimes we don't do that because the world taught us to doubt ourselves and, and have all this ego and stuff like that. And we turn around and we talk ourselves in and out of things that we're not supposed to be doing. We make a decision, then all of a sudden we go, mm, nah, I think I'll go somewhere else and do something else. And then something crappy happens. I've got, a, question. I've got a thousand more, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to relinquish the floor to you, Karen, because I've been patient. <laughs> <enough. laughs> so this is, I guess, an interpretation. I don't know if it was a dream or what, so maybe you can help me figure this out. But about three nights ago, I was it was like, not a dream. Oh, boy. <laughs> yeah. That's not what we want to hear. <laughs> oh, no, no, it's not what I want to hear. So I'm, I'm laying in bed. And then I more on the lines of uh, this is what you got was what we would call a premonition. In other words, you got a message. Are you going to so, follow through with it? Well, I, I don't know because it was I was at, at a window with shears on it, and there was like a, a, a like a, I don't know, say a ghost, but like a spirit and, on the other side of the window, and just like banging on the window trying to get in. And I just kept I put my hand up to where the face ish was, and I was saying, "You're surrounded by love. Be at peace." go to God, go into the light. And I just kept saying that over and over again. And then I opened my eyes and it, it felt like something had been sitting on my chest, like not the weight, but all of a sudden all the air and breath entered back. I felt like I was a deflated balloon and I, I just filled back with air when I woke up. And I remember thinking, oh, what was that? You had, a negative, you had a negative energy outside of the window. That's why there was nothing you could do for it. You could tell it to, to cross over, but it did not want to go. All it wanted to do was get into your house and be a part. Of, and and um, yeah. All you have to do at that point, the only thing you can do, is you, you cannot do the smudging or anything like that because they are in a realm. They don't have a body. They can't breathe, nor can they smell. So the only thing you're doing at that point when you're smudging is you're setting off your fire alarms. <laughs> don't bother with that. The only way that you can fix that is you can just put positive energy out there. That's the only way. It's like having two opposite ends of a magnet. They will not be in the same space together. As long as you put positive energy out there, they won't come around. So you have to just... Do that. When you feel that around you again, mm -hmm. uh, just think about good things. Think about ice cream and puppy dogs and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Or anything you can that's going to make you feel good, and they will go away because they don't like to be around that stuff. So all you need to do is that you could ask your spirit guides as well, especially you, Will. You could talk to your grandmother, and she could protect you from that. Oh, do that. I will. Uh, I want you to know, Daniel, that you just freaked the living daylights out of out of Karen. Yep. If we, <laughs> I will be sleeping again. <laughs> yeah, I think she, she, I saw she almost, almost started crying right then and there. So, no, uh, well, maybe. <laughs> uh, that's after. Well, Hang on. Um, Do I have a spirit guide that can help me? The reason why you were seeing that thing is because you have an ability like mine. Oh. She knows it because she has seen things before. She just doesn't really talk about it all the time because it freaks her out a little bit. Do you know how I know that? Because I'm being talked to. That's why. Who, who's talking you. to you? Do you want to know which one's specifically talking to you? Uh, his name is Michael. He's an archangel. He's also your archangel as well. You didn't know that about yourself, did you? I did not. You know who? Be, how many? You know what kind of people get angels? No. They don't. You get an archangel because they want. They have a specific task that they want you to fulfill for God. Only those people get them. Other people, regular people don't. They just get spirit guides. You get archangels with you to help you do this. So in other words, you're at the uh, extension of uh, your one foot in and one foot out. You either remain who you are in this life as walking through life blindly like everyone else does, or you accept the world the way it is, it truly is, and you move forward and you start using this gift. Well, first you're going to have to have a sit down talk with God and either accept this gift or not. I will tell you it's not easy. The life is not easy. The life is, is uh, sometimes it's quiet because you're uh, secluded from everyone else because you will find after a while you don't like to be around a lot of people, but you don't like to be around a lot of people already anyway, um, as I'm told. You like people, but you find that you, find that you pick up on their negativeness 
very quickly. As a matter of fact, not just that, but you feel as though sometimes when you walk into a room before you're even about to walk in the room, you're picking up on their negative feelings already. That's part of your empath because you're part empath as well. And you feel it and then you walk out of a room and you feel as though you just walk out of a smoky bar because it doesn't leave you and it's all over you like the smoke is all over you. Correct? Yeah. You know how I know that, Will? Because someone's talking to you. Because I can't make this shit up. That's why. You well, have an ability. You do. But it's up to you to decide whether or not you're going to use it. But like I said, it's not easy. I mean, there's a lot of seclusion, but there's a lot of there's a lot of work that goes into it. Everybody wants the cool part of my gift. They want to just be able to talk angels and stuff like that. And it took me a year to be able to trust that, to be able to trust where the information is coming from. Because I do get negative energies around me all the time. They they think they're going to steal some energy off of me, you know, coming at me and, and that getting that glow. They think it's energy they can take, but it's not. So that's why I have so many around me. And that's why the archangels are around me to protect me from that. They will, they will protect you from that as well. I mean, you got that message. Otherwise, if you didn't get that message, it would have just walked in. You can't walk in because you saw it. And it can't walk in because they're protecting you from it. They will protect you from it more, but you have to acknowledge the fact that they're actually going to protect you with that. And right now I'm being touched right here on top of my head. That's Archangel Michael's touching me right there. That's where he always touches me. And um, yeah, so he's here to actually help you if you want to do this. They bring them to me all the time. If they're protecting her, I mean, are they protecting everyone around her? Yes. <laughs> Is it just her? Okay, good. Uh, Karen, you and I, we're going to stick together. That's right. Every day. 13 more nights. Nice my side. Every day. Second thing, yeah, you better be on her like white on rice, buddy. That's right. <laughs> you better believe it. <laughs> like stink on shit right there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, but I mean, that's up to you, Karen, if you want to actually follow through with that. So um, if you want to talk to me off air about that some other time, you just let me know and I'll okay. help. You. Well, it's interesting because I've always told her, and she can confirm this, I've always told her, I feel. Truly that she is an angel walking on this earth because she's that, she's just a, a great, she's just such a good person that I, I just can feel. That's just her soul within her. I mean, uh, but uh, yeah, like, like you hear the term, people say, oh, my grandmom's an angel. She's up in heaven. No. <laughs> just as an it takes a long, very, very long time to actually become an angel in order to become an angel. See, when you go to heaven, you like, like in here earthbound you can still make out with anybody you want to you can go downtown if you want to you do whatever you can still do that when you're in spirit as well uh, because it's all about love there and and you don't have to you don't have to have monogamy and anything it's all about love you can love whoever you want to whenever you want to it doesn't make a difference because there, there's no jealousy there's none of that stuff you were taught all that stuff here that's all so the hippies were right then the free love oh. movement is the way Absolutely. Absolutely. Because it's all about free love. It's all about love. And that's the, that's the big point of it. But, but in order to become an angel, you have to let you, you, you see that no one's having any relations. We're not, we're not having any sexual relations at that point of being an angel. You are just you are doing things that God needs you to do. So uh, it's still about love and everything, but they're not. Yeah. But uh, I mean, if uh, I mean, do you really, do you want to know what archangels look like i mean i know we've run out of time but i can you can splice that in there if you want to i, I mean i can't say no to that yeah no. so archangel michael looks like a moose he has a wider head his eyes are kind of look like wolf eyes but they're a little bit further apart he doesn't have antlers but his his head's kind of wide like a moose and he has a body that's kind of like half horse half moose it's got very short hair on it and he's got these big floppy ears he's he's not what you think he, you think he looks like he doesn't also a let me think of the ones Uriel, Raphael, uh, Gabriel, Ezekiel. I have another one, Manos, Jacob, Daniel. They look like a like a like having a ten foot prey mantis in front of you. That's what looks like. I see them every single day, and I see them like right now when I'm looking at you. I see these little like have you ever seen somebody smoking a cigarette and little petals come off of it? Look like little petals floating mm -hmm. off. That's what I see right now as I'm staring at the two of you. It's going on like right here around me all the time it never goes away i'm always seeing it and that's them yeah. in the light but in the dark i see seven foot ten foot prey mantises standing next to me and it's that's who they are wow. i just i know what they are i know who they are i know what they do for me and they do for everyone else you'll understand it when it's your time uh, i'm not gonna lie i'm a little freaked out this is not uh... absolutely no. that's what that's why they make, that's why they make them look something else in another book so you wouldn't be scared of them 
but they don't even really know as well. They just want you to think there's something else, like they're they're having this battle and stuff like that. They're not. Mm-hmm. That. There is they don't like the negative energies and they will protect you from negative energies, but that's all they're doing. They're just they're not having a battle with them. They're much stronger than the negative energies because the negative energies are just people here who are here were negative. They are much they are much on, on a much higher plane. They're they are are being of a higher consciousness that just no longer needs a body anymore. That's all. They've wow. been here for billions of years, way before religion. Way before. Religion is, religion is a group of people wanting to tell you how to live your life the way they want you to live it. Like I said, and give it 10%. It's, a, it's about power and control and money. Always has been because it was written by the people who was in power and control and money, kings and queens. You know, it's, it's amazing that, we, that everybody wants to protest everything else, but you're not, you know what they're not protesting? The Olympics. Why should they be protesting the Olympics? Because what are the Olympics based on? It's based on a sport that was played by slaves. That was created for kings and queens as entertainment, and they used slaves to play these games and fight their way to their own freedom. And we still play this today. Nobody's protesting that. Yeah. But they're going to protest because you're black and I'm white. You know what? We're all people. We all come from the same planet. We're all, no one's going anywhere anytime soon. We better start to get along with each other before we annihilate each other. Mm. That's where we're headed. Well, I think that is as good of a place to end this conversation as any. <laughs> um, you know what I think? I think there's going to be a part two. Uh, I, I can't tell you how many other questions I've written down that I didn't get to. But before we go, Daniel, if someone wanted to learn from you or reach out to you, contact you in some way, it, what's the best way for them to do that? Talk to God. That was a spirit joke. <laughs> <laughs> I, I totally bought it. Like, yeah, like, of course. Yes. Yeah. You could talk to Jesus. I see him every day. Uh, actually, see his face every single day. Yeah. So if they want to get a hold of me for like a reading or they need spiritual advice, something like that, they could find me at www.spiritmediumdaniel.com. It's one long word, spiritmediumdaniel.com. They can find me on Facebook at Spirit Medium Daniel. They can find me on YouTube at Spirit Medium Daniel. I just did a live show last night where I let people just come in on my Facebook page and ask questions and I answer them for free. You know why? Because it can, and just do that. <laughs> and that, and that's just the type of person I am. Because we should do that. Because that's what he wants me to do. So that's what I do. And uh, or you can find me. Uh, we have a podcast as well called Beyond the Veil with Daniel Jackson, me. And it's it's all about spirit, but uh, metaphysical, supernatural. We talk about tarot cards, health and wellness. We talk about government and uh, religious control because that's what that is about. And um, they can find that at www.beyond-the-veil.com. And or we have another show. It's a newer show where it's called Dead End Stories because dead's not the end. And uh, I answer all the unanswered questions. You come. It's got actually going to be on Saturday night on Facebook at, at uh, 8 o'clock. And you can come in there and it's a call-in show and you can ask questions or you can tell me about your experiences like you just did. And I decipher it for you and tell you what happened. I'm going to add direct links to all these in the show notes. So if you are interested in reaching out to Daniel or listening to the podcast, I'll have direct links on the show notes for that so that it's convenient for you. Daniel, thank you so much for spending your time and energy with us. Uh, you, this conversation was unbelievably eye-opening for me. It hit me. Uh, yeah, thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. You, you didn't get what you were thought you were going to get, did you? <laughs> no, no. I, I, if I was going to be a betting man, this would not be anywhere near the top 20 things I thought we'd be talking about. But uh, uh, Because I'm not the typical medium. I'm not all about the, the world being unicorns and, and rainbows because it's not, because it's, it's real life here and we're going through some real crap and the only way we can cr- fix that crap is by making a change. And the only way that will happen is if everybody changes, not just one. Because one person tried to do it once before, and they murdered him. Yeah. So yes. I need help. It, it's going to take all of us. Yep. Yes. It's take all of us. All right. Well, thank you, Karen. Thanks for uh, putting up with me another day. No, this is fantastic. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm super interested to see what kind of feedback we get. So if you're listening to the show right now and you have uh, any kind of feedback you want to give to us, whether it's positive or something that you think that we are full of, please, by all means, 
let us know. You know, you can always get a hold of us through skepticmetaphysician.com. I do want to thank you profusely for coming along on this journey of discovery. Remember that you can always continue the conversation with us on Facebook and Instagram at Skeptic Metaphysician. You can find direct links not only to those social media platforms and to those of our guests that we discussed, but you can also subscribe to the show or leave us a review or voicemail directly on our website, skepticmetaphysician.com. As always, if you know someone that would benefit from hearing the messages we shared on the show or any of our others, hope you'll consider sharing us with that person. It'll help grow the show and may just help someone else come to terms with the fact that we're so much more than just this three-dimensional body that we inhabit. Uh, you can become a member of the Skeptic Metaphysician community there at the website. All the added benefits are there for you just by signing up. Karen, I'm exhausted. How about you? <laughs> I'm excited. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this episode as much as we have. Sadly, that's all we have for now. Thanks again for joining us. We'll see you again on the next episode of The Skeptic Metaphysician. Until then... Take care.